Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we shall make a very, very interesting game, uh, which is inspired from this popular application called the Tux of Math, right? Now, maybe I'll show you how this thing works and then we can come back to how we are going to do this and what it takes to build, right? So basically this game is very nice and elegant. We have these numbers falling from the sky and we must answer the questions. For example, nine, five, nine again, 11, seven, 13, 11, 6, 3. So basically whatever the question is being asked here, we must answer it. Failing which, if we do not answer 3 times, then the game gets over, right? And how many ever we answer, we get the score, right? So in fact, it turns out that this game, uh, like I said, is inspired from the stucks of math, right? But um, in terms of coding on scratch, right, it requires uh, a lot of usage of lists, uh, cloning and so on. So we are going to do this in two parts, right? The first part of the video, we are going to basically create the clones and have these numbers falling down from the sky as we just saw, right? So, uh, you know, in pairs of three, in uh, groups of three. So something like A plus B, so for example, nine plus zero or say six plus nine, five plus three and so on and so forth. And in the next part, we will see how we, you know, set up this question box, how do we answer and how do we process this answer, right? So this game can appear a little bit overwhelming because there's lots of lists and stuff involved. But really, it's not so difficult if we follow the logic carefully, right? So that's why I urge you to, you know, try and follow, try and follow the argument, try and follow the the way we are thinking about it and i think it it should fall in quite logically right and i also of course i'll try to guide you uh, from a big picture view all the time right so what's going on all right so let's get started right so uh, in terms of you know okay i'll go here in terms of coding this game so right so we are going to require only one sprite uh, which is basically the number sprite right and i have already got it in here because just to save some time also this cost this sprite must have all the nine numbers it's, as its costumes, right? So for example, zero, one, two, three, four, until nine, right? And you know, you can do that in scratch quite easily by just saying, choose a costume. And here I've gone, gone and chosen all the costumes from zero to nine, right? So for example, all these costumes I've already chosen. Uh, so I've already prepared this here. Now, you also remember that we have a plus sign between these numbers, right? So I'm also going to create one more costume here, right, which is basically the plus sign, right? And I, just for the aesthetics, right, I want to make sure that the color of that plus looks same as the color of these numbers. I mean, this is not absolutely necessary, but just for the aesthetics, I'll do it this way, right? So the way I'll create that costume is I will duplicate this, duplicate the nine, you could duplicate anything else, right? I just want to make sure that I want to draw like a line you know, like a like a crisscrossing line with the same color as this, right? So I go and choose the line tool and in the outline, I'll go and select the dropper tool and just go and select, remember, the color that I want, right? So it's now, it's exactly this color. With this done, I can just go and draw two lines, right? Maybe a little bit, you know, like this and one more here, right? So that becomes my plus sign. It looks a little, okay, it looks a little bit offset. So I'll fix this right now. Uh, you know, the plus looks a little bit offset. So I'll just fix this line to the center and that I think that's sufficient. Yeah. So I've got my plus sign. Now I can go and remove this nine completely and I can move this plus to the center. Now moving to plus center is important because remember we are going to clone this and going to send this to some places. We want to make sure that this number nicely aligns with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the other numbers, right? With this operator nicely aligns with the other numbers, right? So now, uh, the game basically starts by, you know, having these numbers drop down from the sky. Uh, well, I mean, from the top of the platform, top of the stage. Um, basically, that requires cloning, right? So we are going to clone these numbers in some uh, in some logic and have them flow from top to down. And also, we are going to use a lot of lists here to keep track of what we are doing, right? So keep track of what each clone is. Um, you know, we'll assign a unique ID to every clone and store that in lists. Uh, and also we will use that later on to delete these clones when we answer correctly, right? That's like I said for the second part, right? Now, uh, here I'm going to require using five lists in this game, right? So it must feel a little bit daunting, uh, but let's go through it, right? Uh, let me just tell you, uh, let's just get started with the cloning part first, right? Uh, all right, so the, the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a variable that is 
only for this sprite right now the reason i'm doing so is because i want to assign a unique id to every clone that i create right so remember for that to happen the variable must be only for that sprite right so i'm going to create that variable right away which is i'm going to call it make a variable make sure you're clicking on this for this sprite only right because this has to be a variable that every clone can uniquely maintain so i'm going to create a clone id right and now i can start writing a little bit of code and you know i can see it immediately it's for this clone it's this sprite only because it shows glow zero clone id right um, with this done what i'll do now is that i will start writing a little bit of code and so that we can start introducing the cloning part of it right so basically i'll say when flag clicked right so when flag clicked uh, you know so obviously I'll, I'll go and say hide so that you don't show the original sprite right so hide and I'll set the clone ID to zero, right? Now the reason is will become obvious, but this is very important because I want the clones to be numbered from one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. So I set this to zero initially so that I make sure that the clones are numbered exactly the way I want them to, right? Uh, so I do this. Um, also, I'll set the, uh, you know, I'll set the, uh, the size of this, uh, numbers to a little bit smaller so probably I can try with say set size to say 30% right uh, and then remember all my clones are going to start from the top right so now again you can do a variation where clones come from a different direction that's fine or different uh, you know starting point but for my game here right I'm going to have the clones starting from the top right so uh, instead of doing it again and again I'll just do it one time in the motion block I'll go and say set y to something like say one uh, say 180 or something like that right so that it kind of goes on top and it sits there right so it, it nicely goes and sits there okay now uh, for the cloning to happen basically what i want is that every now and then i should have some numbers coming down so i'll put it in a forever loop i'll go and put control uh, you know forever loop and i'll say for example wait you know uh, go to the control of course so i'll say go wait for a while so maybe wait i can say wait randomly between say say one to two seconds right uh, of course later on we will uh, play with this a little bit as we build this code to understand things right i will you know for now what i'll do is that i'm going to set the x position to uh, anywhere basically i i want the number to fall from anywhere from the left corner to the right corner right however for now all right for now uh, because i'm going to display the lists and so on so so forth later on so i'm going to limit the x a little bit and i'm going to say set x to right so what i'll do is i'll say set x to say something like you know maybe somewhere here which should be about uh, you know uh, which should be let's say about 100 30 or something like that so i'll just put it to 130 i mean again we'll we'll come back to this point we'll later on make it a random number so that x is indeed not constrained to be there but just for the uh you know just for the uh basically just for the uh, making sure that i can accommodate the lists i'm forcing the numbers to come down here only for now yeah uh, i'll also add a little bit of color effect in this right so the reason i'm doing so is because every pair of my clones I want it to appear a little bit different, right? So again, this is not mandatory, but this is, you know, just uh, sort of uh, kind of gives it a nice feel, right? So notice what I mean here is that when I play this game, right, in my prepared game, I've got seven plus zero appearing, say dark blue color, right? So the answer seven, it disappears. 17 appears slightly different color, 13 appears in slightly different color, one plus four appears in a different color and so on. So this is just a cosmetic thing, but it looks nice, right? So I'll, to do so, I'll add this change color effect by 20. And now I'm going to create clones, all right? So now to do so, remember my clones are going to be created randomly, right? Basically clones are going to be copies of the same sprite, but with a random costume, right? So I'm going to have to create three clones, okay? Now the first clone has to be a number, which is basically the number on the left side of the question. The second clone is the number on the right side. And the third clone is going to be the, the operator. Now, in this case, I have only one operator, which is a plus sign. But you can imagine that we can build this game to have multiple operators, right? So I'm going to keep it quite general, uh, quite, uh, you know, so that you don't get constrained. Uh, so I want to give you a structure which can be built on, which can be extended in many different ways. Uh, hence, I'll view this as having to create three clones, out of which two have a random costume. Okay, now what do you mean by random costume? any costume from 
zero, zero, one, two, three, four until say nine, right? Two of the numbers will do this, and the third costume will be exactly the plus sign, right? So let's just see how I do this. Uh, basically, I'm going to say. I'll use two variables here, right? So I'll create a variable. Now this variable need not be for the particular clone because it's only the clone ID that we are going to track, right? Not what number came in there, but we shall see how we'll use this, right? So what I'll do now is that I'll create two variables. I'll call them temp1, all right? And I'll call them temp2. So these are basically going to keep track of my two numbers, right? And what I'll do is to say, let's pick up a random number assign it to temp1 and the random number should be between 1 and 10 right so i'll say set uh, you know set say for example temp1 to uh, i can duplicate this part pick random 1 to 10 right and also i can do the same thing for temp2 right now be careful make sure you change the drop down otherwise temp2 will probably get stuck to zero right and then again the game will have some uh, issues right so what am i doing here right i'm picking up two numbers randomly between 1 and 10, right? And what do I want to do with these numbers is next. Uh, basically, I will I will bring these numbers to give me a costume, right? So uh, what I'll do now is that I will say, you know, I'm going to create three clones here, remember? The first clone will have a costume of temp1, right? So temp1, remember, is a number between 1 and 10. So all I'm saying is, you know, I go in the looks and I say, switch costume to right switch costume to uh i'll use a variable called temp1 yeah uh, and now i can create a clone of myself right but before that but before that i want to give my clone a id a unique id so i will say change clone id so not set sorry i'll use change clone id by 1 right and in the control i'll go and say create clone of myself right now what this does as we know we have seen this many times before uh, basically it's going to create one clone right now one clone which has been created when the clone id has been set to one right so this is well basically has been changed from zero to one because remember clone id started at zero now clone id here has become one right so uh, basically this will ensure that this particular clone has an id of one right so we are not going to change the clone id within the clone so once the clone has been created with the clone id having been set to one when it gets created, its ID becomes 1, right? I mean, it's a little different from what we had done previously, where we set the clone ID inside the, you know, inside this, uh, when I start as a clone, but the effect is the same. So here we are setting clone ID or actually changing clone ID from 0 to 1, which means when this clone is formed, right? At this point of time, uh, you know, whenever this statement gets executed, which means when this clone is created, the clone ID is 1. And the effect of that is that this clone ends up having an ID of 1. Remember, clone ID is a variable unique to that particular sprite, right? So, I mean, only for this sprite, which means every clone is going to have its own copy. This particular clone will maintain a copy of clone ID, which is 1, right? And this is very, very, very important in this game because we will identify these clones with these clone IDs later on, right? Um, now, having done so, basically what this will do is that I've got one clone right uh, somewhere at some x value i want to create which so first clone for example here so i've got right now i've got one number for example the number three i want to create one more number slightly offset from this number right from the previous number so that it can be uh, my second operator right so i will now go and create the second number and that's quite simple because all i'll do is that i will say change my x a little bit so in this case i'll use say change x by say 50 right so change i mean this is again uh, not necessary but the whole idea is i want to offset the x a little bit to the right because i'm always going to write first number which is the left number given by temp1 plus the second number which is now which is what i'm going to create now uh, and i'm going to say switch costume to you know switch costume to temp i should stop this thing switch costume to temp2 right so switch costume to temp2 change clone id by 1 which means now clone id will become 2 and create a clone of myself right uh, i don't need to do this anymore right now so what this will do is that it will create two clones of the number uh, you know uh, with two different costumes right and why are there two different costumes well because 
both costumes are being set to a random number 1 to 10 temp 1 is that and so is temp 2 we are switching costume before creating a clone in fact we could also have done it reverse so we could have created the clone and then switch costume but in this case i've just chosen to do it this way because i want to keep my code post creation of clone somewhat smaller i mean this is just program it uh, you know the effect is the same uh, you can do it both ways right so here the important point to remember is the clone will take the costume that you've just switched to the clone will have a clone id that you have just created right so basically clone id will become one here for example now the clone id will be two which means the number on the right will have a clone id of two uh, i'm going to create one more clone all right now remember this clone is going to be the operator clone which is going to appear in between in between the left and right numbers right so like seven and nine and in between there's a plus seven eight there's a plus in between right so i'm going to create the operator here uh before i do that let me just go and rename the costume for the operator as plus right so i just call it say plus so that it's a little bit you know easier to read and uh what i will do now is that i will say look i have you know put one number here uh, say somewhere at 130 put another number at 50 offset from there. So I want to come back a little bit. So I'm going to say, maybe duplicate all of this and put it here, but I'm going to change my X by minus 25. Why minus 25? Because I want this number, uh, sorry, this operator to go and fit right in middle of the two numbers, right? So I'm just creating that number here. Uh, you know, uh, I'll change X by minus 25. So basically, you know, I create the first number, then I change 50 numbers to create the second number. I come back 25 steps to create the operator so that the operator fits in right in the middle of the two numbers, right? And again, I will create a clone, but of course, this time I will not change the costume to switch costume temp2. I'll instead switch costume to, you know, uh, basically the plus sign, right? So, but remember the clone ID would have been uniquely assigned to every uh, operator. And, and we shall see this in just a moment when I introduce all the lists. Okay, I did not do this intentionally because it tends to get a little bit confusing with all the lists. Having done the clones, we will have them falling down and then we will, you know, uh, bring in all the lists, right? So let us just also add a code for what this clone is supposed to do when it falls down so that this picture completes, uh, when, sorry, when it gets created. So I go to control and I say, when I start as a clone, right? So remember, when I start as a clone is what the clone will do after it has been created. Uh, first thing first, I must show myself, right? So I'll go and say show. And thereafter, I just want it to fall in a simple fall, right? So all I want is that I want its Y value to change by, say, a certain number, exactly like what we've done previously in the catch game and so on. Um, you know, all we'll do is that I'll say control forever. And here I'll say change Y by, say, uh, you know, maybe say minus one or minus two or something like that, right? If you really want, you can even make a variable and change this as the game goes on. But, uh, you know, for now, I'll just make it change y by minus one, right? So let's see what this does. So far, we have intentionally not introduced any lists because we wanted you to get familiar with all of this first and then we can get on with the list, right? So notice when I do this, I've got a number falling from there, a number on the left, a number on the right and a plus sign in between. And, you know, these numbers are being randomly given costumes uh, because that's because of temp1 and temp2. And of course, I'm getting lots and lots of these because I'm doing this forever, right? Waiting for a random time of one to two seconds, right? So if I want to increase the interval between these numbers, well, not a problem. I can go and change the waiting time here and it will change, right? But the important point to realize is that I am getting three clones getting created per iteration right so first clone is the number on the left second clone is a number on the right and the third clone is this operator right like i said always operator is plus for us but that uh, you know you can always build it uh, in a way that you know you have different uh, operators as well right and notice the clone id is increasing because each clone has a unique id now that's very 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 important to this game uh, you know uh, when we Add, as we add more and more code, this will become more obvious, right? But this part is very important, right? So, so far, uh, every clone has to have an ID. And like I said previously, we have done this uh, from the clone itself, but now I'm doing it outside the clone. Uh, the effect is the same. Basically, the way you have to think about it is that when I create this clone, which is, say, this statement, what was the value of this variable, uh, you know, which is local to that sprite? So, if the value was 10, 
uh, for example, then the ID of that clone will become 10. And since the clone is not changing it, the ID stays forever, right? So little different from what we did, for example, in the snake game, but the concept on the effect is the same, yeah? Now, all right, now having done all this, so far we are all in the familiar zone. I think nothing uh, unusual in this. Now let us introduce lists and probably it's going to get a little bit confusing, but it need not be, right? So what I'm going to do, all right, what I'm going to do now is to introduce four lists at this point of time, right? Although our game uses five lists, but I'm going to introduce four lists and I'm going to tell you the purpose of each of these lists, okay? Uh, so let's go one by one. So I'm going to introduce four lists here, right? So remember lists are basically variables. So I go make a list. The first list that I call it, I, I mean, I, the name I have given it is called left clone, right? But probably a better name uh, could also be left clone ID, but never mind, let's just let it be left clone. But really, I'm going to store the IDs of the clone inside this, uh, right? The next list I'm going to create is the right clone, right? Which is again, the IDs of the right clone that I'm going to create. And the third list I'm going to create is the operator clone, right? And we'll come to the fourth list in just a moment, yeah? The third list is the operator clone, okay? Uh, remember, these are all the clone IDs. The variable clone ID is what we are going to store into these lists, right? Uh, so it will keep us track of which clone is where, okay? Uh, it will become clear as we go on. Now I'm going to create one more list, which is actually a very, very, very important list as far as this particular code is concerned going forward. And that list is going to be the list of answers, right? So we are us, okay? All right, so I, now I've got these four lists created, right? I really do not want anybody to feel intimidated here. Uh, you know, it's kind of very logical. So I'll put it left, right, left operator, right. And remember, these are the clone IDs. Yeah, maybe I'll keep it a little bit like this. And finally, I'll keep the answers here, right? Because numbers, remember, the way I've, because I've set X to 130, the numbers are going to fall from here, right? So let's see what I'm going to add to this list, yeah? Uh, but before I get into the, the coding part of it, right? Let me just tell you the broad scheme of what we are trying to do. Now, this is very, very important because if you do not have a picture of what we are trying to do, okay? What we are trying to do, then the how we are doing it is going to get confusing, right? How we are going to do is all the lists and addition, deletion into the list and so on and so forth. But you must understand what is it that we are trying to do. And to do so, I have created a slide called scheme for you, right? Now, for now, let's just look at the first part of this video, okay? So, uh, of course, we'll come back to this in the second part of the video. But this is the big picture of what we are trying to do here, okay? Uh, we are going to create close of numbers and assign the unique ID. We have already done that. Okay. Now we are going to add these IDs to a list, to basically three lists. The number that went on to left will get assigned to the left clone. Uh, the number went, which went on to the right will get assigned to the right clone. And the operator clone ID will get assigned to the operator clone. Okay. For each of these pairs, we are going to calculate the correct answer and store that in the list called answers right now i do not want to go further at this point of time we'll come back to the slide but the important point that i want you to keep in mind right the the whole logic of this game is based on the fact that the lists called left clone right clone and operator clone and answers are going to be perfectly coordinated all right now what do i mean by that uh, you will see this in action you will see that the item K of each of these lists corresponds to the same entry, right? So, which means that if I'm getting, let's say, clone ID number one and clone ID number two uh, add up to, say, an answer of 15, then you will see the index of 15 in answers will be the same as the index of these clones in the list called, uh, you know, left clone and right clone. And this is a pivotal point because this is what will allow us to index this list and to keep track of what we are going to delete, right? So here's the big picture theme. Uh, let me repeat this again. We, are, we have already created the clones, assigned the unique IDs. Now we are going to add the IDs of these clones into the list, okay? Remember, it's not the value, but it's the ID of this clone because we are recognizing these clones by the ID. Uh, uh, you know, we are going to add these IDs to the list and we are going to create a list called answers, which is perfectly in sync with these three lists, yeah? So uh, that's the sort of big picture theme of this. 
I thought it's important so that we know what's going on. Okay, so now how do we do this? Okay, remember the first thing I I, I got four lists here. The first list, let's say I I'm going to you know populate is the answers list answers list because I know when I know the temp one and temp two. I also know what is the answer and what do I mean by that? Let's see this again, okay? Now let's say my numbers are going to clone and get come from there. So I know it's 4 plus 6. That means the answer must be 10. It's 9 plus 9. The answer must be 18. 3 plus 3. The answer must be, uh, you know, 6 and so on and so forth, right? So I can pre-calculate these answers and keep storing them in the list called answers, right? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, there's only a little bit of trick. Let me just put that code and then I'll talk about it, right? So what I'll do here, uh, of course, first thing first, I must, you know, I must empty out all the lists, okay? So that's a good practice. Otherwise, you will have, you know, difficulty when you run the code again and again. So I'm going to delete all these four lists, right? Delete all of left clone, uh, delete all of right, uh, sorry, right clone, right? Delete all of operator clone uh, okay sorry delete all of answers right so i do all this i clean up all the lists as i start and now i'm going to say look the first list i'm going to fill up is the list called answers right and answers is relatively i mean it's quite easy for me to figure out because i know what costumes are coming out from there and how do i know that because well the costumes are basically temp1 and temp2 However, there's a small catch, which we just see, okay? Let's say, let's say, uh, I said, look, I'm going to do here, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when this game starts, 5 plus 0 is 5, 3 plus 4 is 7, 2 plus 1 is 3. So, it's very simple, right? I could just do add, all right, add this quantity, add, oops, right here. So, I'm going to add this temp 1 plus temp 2 into this list, right? But actually, that's not correct and I'll show you in a while. Why, why that is not correct and how do we fix it, right? So I will just say, look, I know temp1 and temp2 are creating my, you know, my, uh, oops, sorry, I'll add, oh, where is our operator? Add operator, something plus something. So here, add, say, temp1 plus temp2 to the answers. And this is a, you know, I, the reason I'm making this mistake intentionally is because I want you to kind of, Think about what's going on here. Understand what's happening. Yeah. Uh, now let's see what's going to happen. So if I did this, number is 4 plus 1, but here I'm getting 7. Number is 5 plus 2, I'm getting 9. I got 0 plus 5, I got 7, right? So notice that every time what gets added to the answers is actually 2 more than what's the real sum. So 2 plus 3 is 5, but what got added to the list is 7, yeah? Uh, maybe I'll slow this down a little bit so that you can, you know, maybe we can just make it wait, say, 5 seconds uh, for now. So that we get a lot of time to think about what's going on. And that's important in these list games, right? You understand. Now, notice 7 plus 8 is actually 15. But what got, add, got added to answers was 17. 8 plus 3 is 11. What got added is actually 13. Now, why did that happen? Okay. Uh, that really happened because, okay, remember, we are using temp1 and temp2 to be random numbers between 1 and 10. However, recall that costume 1 Costume 1 is really number 0. Costume 3 is really number 2. Costume 5, for example, is number 4, right? So if I take, if if my first sprite on the left takes up costume number 2, it means that the number in there is actually 1. If it takes uh, costume number 5, it means the number in there is actually 4, right? So I cannot just do temp, plus, temp 1 plus temp 2. Instead, what I need to do is temp 1 plus temp 2 minus 2. Now, why minus 2? Because remember, each number has been, you know, over assigned. So basically, temp is one more than the number that actually shows up, right? And that's simply because costume number 1, uh, let me just show you again. So, what I'm going to do here is temp 1 plus temp 2. Oops. Okay. Oops. So, this you have to be a little bit careful, you know, it gets a little bit messy. So, I'll put this first, put this in there. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got it wrong, right? So, okay, this can get a little bit painful. So I'm going to put, okay, what I want is temp1 plus temp2 minus 2. So temp1 plus temp2 must go in here. Temp1, of course, it can be temp2 plus temp1. That's not a problem. But, you know, temp1 plus temp2 minus 2, right? So let's see what this does and see if this makes sense from the answer point of view, right? So again, I'm going to start this game. Uh, you know, the answers becomes empty. Uh, 
the 6 plus 9 is 15 and indeed I see 15, right? Uh, 1 plus 9 is 10 and what do I see on the list? Remember it's getting added so it's always the second element, 10. 1 plus 7 is 8 so the third element now is 8, right? And this makes sense. So the reason this minus 2 had to be done is simply because like I said, look at the costumes again. Costume number 1 is actually 0, right? Costume number 2 is actually number 1 and so on and so forth, right? So that's why I had to do temp1 plus temp2 minus 2, right? So that is my correct answer. Now, if you're building another operator, for example, if you're building, uh, you know, say a multiply, right? Then you just have to be very careful. Again, the formula may not be temp1 mi multiplied by temp2 minus 2. You have to be, uh, you know, carefully understand what is the number out there corresponding to this costume and what is the right answer, right? That onus is on you so that the game keeps working correctly, okay? Now, let's populate let us populate the list for the clone IDs, okay? Uh, now, like I said, my I have created three clones. We have seen them falling from there. Basically, I'm creating clones in the order. The first clone here, which where I'm setting costume to temp1, is the, you know, is the left clone, okay? Uh, the second clone is the right clone. And the third clone is the operator clone. All right. So what I'll do is before I form this, you know, uh, clone here, remember my clone ID is unique for that clone. So I will go and add to this, you know, I'll go to the variables and I'll say add. Uh, so I'll use add thing to answers. Now remember that the clone ID has to have changed before I add in here, right? So if I were to add this, oops, oops, oops sorry. If I were to add this clone ID, before the clone is actually formed, then, you know, uh, the, the correspondence is going to go up because the clone is going to take the, the ID value, which has been, which is the latest value, right? So it's been changed to one. Now that it has been changed to one, I'll go and add a clone ID to left clone, right? Because this was my left clone. Uh, once again, the left clone forms, it starts to fall down. Then I change X by 50, right? I create change a new costume, again change the clone ID. So now clone ID has become two. At this point, I'm going to add my, uh, you know, add the clone ID to the list called right clone. Remember, it has to be on this point. Let me see if I can duplicate this. I don't need all of this. I can throw this away. But at this point, I'm going to say add clone ID to right clone. Okay, now this is very, very important because if you were to change it before this, that means the clone ID will still be old. All right, and the actual clone would have a different ID compared to what went into the list, right? We do not want that. That's why change the clone ID and then add it to the right to the correct list, right? So it's also possible. I know people sometimes are careless, sometimes are doing things fast. It's possible that they might add left clone once again, and that's going to mess up the whole thing, right? So be careful on this. Go a little bit slow, but you know, slow but solid, right? Uh, you will find that it's a lot easier than having to debug later on. Yeah. Finally, I'll Again, going to, I'm going to add the operator clone ID also to a list, which is called the operator clone. And here I go and say, add clone ID to operator clone, right? So if I did this, remember again, I, and I highlight this once again, that I have done this after the clone ID has been changed so that there's a perfect correspondence between the clone ID of the operator and what went inside this list, okay? Now with this, it's kind of, Time for us to see this working. Uh, what happened there? Okay, I don't think I need this. Yeah. So it's time for us to see this working uh, and see the part of the scheme that I mentioned coming together. All right. Before we wrap this video up and move on to the next part, which will be all about processing the answer. And again, of course, using lots of lists and so on. Yeah. So once we get started, right, everything gets empty. My clone starts to form, right? I've got so I've got clone number, oops, so let's, let me just, okay, yeah, here, this is fine. 7 plus 1 is 8, that's in the answer, that's clone 1, 2, 3. Clone number 4, 5, 6 gave me 8 again, uh, then I got 13 and so on and so forth. Let's see this once again a little bit more carefully, okay. Clone number 1, 2 and 3 gets formed immediately and their answer gets, it's in this case, clone number 1, 2, 3, their IDs are 1, 2, 3, but the values are 1 plus 1, answer is 2, that comes here. 7 plus 2, IDs are 4, 5 and 6, answer is 9, right? Uh, 5 plus 2, IDs are 7, 8 and 9, answer is 7, right? So the, all these lists are getting populated as these numbers are 
falling from the sky the important point to realize okay important point to realize and understand is that the ids of the clones which gave rise to this particular answer are exactly aligned with the answers list and that's why i put them like this uh, basically where i'm getting at is that if i were to take the numbers denoted by clone ids let's say 7 8 and 9 so basically 7 was left clone 8 was right clone 9 was operator the, these are remember the ids the numbers added up to 7 right so now which means that this is the right answer which i will have to use later on okay uh, one point i want to make very very clear to everybody at this point of time is that what we are storing in these lists are not the numbers okay are instead the ids remember we are doing add clone id to left clone add clone id to right clone and so on and so forth so we are not adding the number and because there's really no reason for you to add the number right that's for us to solve the problem solve the puzzle but really for uh you know for the purpose of the game all we need is this id and that's what we are doing right so let's see this once again very carefully notice the the first number that comes in let's see what comes uh, we have got here 6 plus 6. So this is clone ID 1. This is clone ID 2. This is clone ID 3. Their sum is 12 is stored here. 7 plus 0, clone ID 4, clone ID 5, clone ID 6. The sum is sum sto 7 stored here. Clone ID uh, 7, clone ID 8, clone ID 9. Sum is 5 stored here and so on and so forth. Right. So this is what I said in the scheme. Let's just revise the scheme once again. Uh, we have done until here. The important point of the scheme is that the lists left clone, right clone, operator clone, and answers are perfectly coordinated. Okay, they are perfectly coordinated in the sense that the item K of the list answers. So, for example, item one of the list answers corresponds to the answer obtained by items K of left, right, operator clone list. Right now, in this case, operator was only one, but you can have as many operators so long as you maintain this architecture, you will be fine. Right, and to this effect, remember, very important that you must change the clone ID before you add the uh, clone to the left id uh, so the left clone or right clone right so if this structure breaks the game will break all right so this structure is pivotal to this uh, uh, you know to, to this game and the usage of this we will see in the next part right so uh, i'll uh, i'll wrap this video up here in the next part we'll come back and see how we process the list answers and how we delete these clones right it's very logical provided we follow the uh, the, the structure that we have formed all right take care thank you so much